Gay Lynn. I'm the Rhinestone Queen. I thought today would be a good time to do some basic rhinestoning techniques. So today we're going to do like Rhinestone 101. A lot of people for some reason are a little intimidated by rhinestoning. You feel like you're not creative enough to do it. It's really not difficult. You don't have to be super creative. It's a lot of just technique. And if you learn the technique, you can do a really nice professional job at your home and save yourself a ton of money and not have to pay somebody like me to do it for you. So let's get started. Let's talk about the supplies we'll need. First thing you need is a surface to work on. So I usually use a foam board. You can also use if you don't have a foam board. And when I say foam board, I'm talking about, you know, those big old eight by four foot sheets of foam insulation they use to put on houses when they're building houses. That's what I use. And I just cut them up to the size I need. The other thing you'll need is, uh, you'll need rhinestones, of course. You'll need some glue. I use E6000, and I find it's the best glue to use. It it's dries clear, it's flexible, great glue. Uh, and I use the one that comes with a little needle nose on it. They make a larger tube. It doesn't come with the needle nose applicator. I think you're going to have much better success using the needle nose applicator. You can get a smaller glue dot. You also need some type of applicator tool. If you don't have an applicator tool, I'll tell you how to make your own. If you can't find one at your local craft store, you can also uh, drop me a message in Facebook Messenger and I can get some for you. They're only $5 a package. So uh, just let me know if you need some. You'll need some straight pins and some paper towels. So let's get started. You know, rhinestones come in a variety of sizes. Here's some of the ones I use most often. Hopefully the dime that I put there helps you to see uh, the size comparison. For today's project, we're gonna use an SS20. And just so you know, uh, the stones come in different shapes, they come in different sizes, and they come in a huge variety of colors. Uh, this is the Swarovski color chart, but today we're gonna be using an economy stone. Since this is a t-shirt, I'm gonna basically wear around my house. So I might have neglected to mention one little other supply you need, and that's a large Ziploc bag to go over whatever surface you're gonna be working on. I just trim off the top and I trim off the bottom. No, I trim off the sides, each of the sides. And now I've got a nice flat Ziploc bag. I'm gonna cover my foam board with the Ziploc bag. You can use tape, you can use pins. Since I have 8,000 pins, I use pins, but you use whatever makes you happy. So I just secure the Ziploc bag tautly on here. That way the glue doesn't go through to the surface. If you're using this foam board and that E6000 gets on the foam board, it's actually gonna eat through the board. If a little of the glue sleep, seeps through, you need the Ziploc bag behind to catch it so you can get your project separated from the surface. Otherwise, you might have your project with a bunch of blue foam boards sticking to it when you finish it, and that'll be pretty sad. Next thing I do, stick the project on the board, the part I want to stone, and I'm going to stone the big LSU here. Go Tigers! And so I'm going to secure it on my board. If you were using a wooden board, what you could do is just pull it taut behind and then pin it from behind. Since I'm using this foam board, the beauty of it is I can just pin directly into the foam board and pull it taut on each side. And I'm just pulling it taut. I'm not overstretching. If you're working with Lycra and you're doing a dance costume, you wanna make sure that you stretch it to the amount, to the measurement of the child that's wearing the costume. So if you're doing a pair of trunks, for example, and the child has a 30 inch hip. You wanna make sure the width of your foam board is at least 29 to 30 inches in circumference so that when you put stretch the Lycra over it, it's the same amount of stretch that it's going to be on the child's body. So you wanna make sure that you kinda of mimic that stretch so that the rhinestones that you put on, especially if you're putting them close together, they won't end up in a big bunch where you have a big bunch of rhinestones and then a gap. So that'll help you do a neat job. So I'm going to just keep pinning this on and then we're going to pull all the rest of our supplies together and get started. Having the right glue is so important. I love E6000. It's 
one of my favorite things. You do want to use this in a well-ventilated area because the fumes can get to you. So crack open a window, get a fan going, do something like that. I use the one with these fabulous little needles. You can find it, like if you go to Walmart, it's in the um, by the jewelry usually, or it might be with all the craft glue. Different Walmarts keep it in different places. Um, I got this one from Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99. It's like a dollar and a half less at Walmart. So it just depends where you get it. You'll want to hang on to this little black cap. That's how you'll seal the glue after you open it. So first thing I gotta do is open the glue. I just use a pin to open it up. One of the many reasons you need a paper towel handy. I'll just toss that in the trash. Then I can put the cap on, the white cap back on. And then you see there's a little spout at the top and I screw the applicator tip on to that. Save these because what you're going to do is after your first use of this, you're going to toss it in the trash. It's just really no more good. You can try to clean it out. No fun. Um, they give you extra tips. So I just save these and use them later. Save the cap. You'll need it later. Then I take a half a paper towel. This is so important. I learned this because I made a mess before. This glue when you fold it, there's just so much pressure. It ends up having glue squirting out the sides of the tube. It's just a hot mess. So I figured out that if I wrap the bottom in a paper towel, it won't poke a hole in itself. And you roll it up like you roll a toothpaste tube and that'll keep it from poking a hole. And now you see I got a little bead of glue coming out the top. I'm gonna wipe it and it's really important as you're gluing to keep that clean. So. Before you get started gluing on your project, you really should do some practice dots first. I've got my paper towel in hand and my glue in the other. And first thing I'm gonna do is wipe the tip of the glue. You wanna make sure, see it's got a little crusty built up on it. I was using a little minute ago. So I just wipe all that off with my fingers and then wipe the tip. You wanna have a clean tip every time you stone. When you put a glue dot down, you're going to come in a huh, little, it's not quite, it's about a 45 degree angle. Put the glue dot down, squeeze the tube gently, and then kind of scratch it the surface away. You want to avoid string. See, I just made a string because I went so slow. If you get a string, glad it happened. You just come in with a pin and pull it up. If you try to wipe it right now, it's going to rub into the fabric. And we don't want to do that. See, it came right up with the with the with a pin. Um, so, don't wipe your glue into the fabric. You'll be real sad if you do. Uh, if you can't get it up with the pin, wait until it dries, and then come back and pull it up with a pin because it's going to be just sitting gently on top of the fabric. It won't have it won't have sucked in unless you rub it in. So, forty five degree angle pressure and come up. And because I'm going so slow, I'm making strings. Let me try to let me try to go to decent speed. There we go. And I don't know if you can hear the little sound. There, can you hear it? I'm scratching the surface just a little bit. So if I scratch the surface, I don't get strings. And look at those dots, how they're pretty similar in size. When I go faster, I can make the dots a little smaller. That's just how my hand works. You'll just have to practice it, and uh, I promise it's not hard. It's just learning to squeeze with the right amount of pressure and laying it down, pulling it back. When you put the stone on, you're gonna pick, let me put a few stones up here so you can see them. First, you gotta have them flipped over with the shiny side up. And then you pick them up with your pickup stick. And I'm gonna lay it on top of the stone at a little bit of an angle and just let it kind of sit on there and it's gonna fall down on it. And just drop it on top and drop it on top. I'm gonna cover each dot with a stone. And after I cover each dot with a stone, now you might not wanna waste your rhinestones. I have 10 million of them. You might not wanna waste yours and laying this many down on a practice, but I would lay a couple down to practice before you do it for real. When you lay them down, after that, you can poke them with the back of your pickup stick and kind of slide them into place. You see how I was able to get these positioned 
where they're perfect. Well, I don't know if I got a ruler out and measured, they'd be perfect, but by the eyeball, they're about the same distance apart and they're about in a straight line. So I'm pretty happy with that. This one's an oddball. They were my practice dots. I'm not gonna worry about them. So pretend like they're not there. There we go, they're gone. So that's what we're gonna do on the t-shirt. Let's go. I've got my shirt nice and taut on the board. Got my applicator tips. Got my rhinestones. I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna outline is what I decided I wanna do. I just wanna outline all my letters. And I'm doing these, oh gosh, that's probably somewhere between a quarter and an eighth of an inch apart. And see, that didn't quite work out perfectly, but that's good because you're gonna to get to see how to fix that. So I've put down two, four, six glue dots. So I'll pick up a rhinestone. You can pick up one or two at a time, whatever makes you happy. By the way, here we go, picking up the rhinestone. You use the wax part of this tip, you put it down on the stone, and you pick them up. And then when you lay them on top of the glue, you're gonna come in from this kind of a side angle and just let it fall on top. And just let it sit there. It's okay, we're gonna come back and adjust it in a minute. Let it fall on top. And let's cover all six of our glue dots. And then I'm gonna just let them fall on top and place it. That one I'm gonna have to cheat a little bit. And because I gotta cheat this one over, I'm gonna come in from this side, and that way I can cheat it over and I won't leave a mess. So now I got my stones positioned. I'm gonna start at the two ends because I know those have a hard spot they have to be, right? And then the rest of these, I'll just kind of eyeball them into position. And I'm using the back side of the applicator tip to secure them down. Okay, folks, that's it. That's how hard it is to rhinestone. Um, I, I've been doing this a long time, so I do a lot of dots. I usually do about 15 to 20 dots, and then I do 15 to 20 stones, but I'm pretty fast. So if you are just starting out, you might wanna do five or 10 dots. Do what makes you comfortable, and it's okay if you take forever. It doesn't matter, you know? It's not hard, but look how pretty that looks. They're all in a nice line. They're pretty even. I got a little bit of a mess of a glue dot right here that where I, um, I overshot, but that's not gonna show, and it's gonna be okay. I remember I told you that I'd tell you how to make one of these. If you get a, a toothpick and you have some, get some dental wax and you could just put a little dental wax on the edge of the tip. That's all this is, is a little plastic tip with a uh, piece of wax on the end. Like I said, I have them. They're five bucks a piece. If you want them, just message me. Well, now you can see I'm stoning the rest of the letters. I'm starting by putting down a row of dots I do, I usually do 10 to 15 or so, and then maybe 20 even, and, and then top the, the stones on top of the dots. It's really important that you have one dot with one rhinestone. If you try to put, say, a line of glue and then put all the stones on top of the line, it's going to cause you problems down the road. It might look nice immediately, but after time, it's going to start to pick up and you're going to end up, the, the glue is going to peel off and you'll start losing multiple stones. Whereas doing this technique, if you lose one stone, it's independent of all the others. So good little tip there. And uh, I'm almost done with the U. Almost, here we go. Last few stones going on. Well, there's our finished product. So it's time to pick up the glue, which by the way, if for some reason you're working on your project, you need to take a break for lunch or something, um, just take a straight pin, stick it in the end of the tube, and then you could cover this, put it in a Ziploc bag, take all the air out of it, and it's okay for a couple of hours. You wouldn't want to leave it like that overnight because it's going to dry out on you. But that's why you need to save that little black tube. Oh my gosh, now it's gone. <laughs> there it is. You save the little black tube because this one will come off. I think it'll come off. And we just take this tip off and we're going to discard that. Put the little black tube and you're good to go. And I just keep my tube and my extra tips in a bag keep them together and I have it when I'm ready to use it again. So there's our finished shirt, ready to take it off the board. I'm just gonna take the straight pins out. Now 
Now, if this were a dance costume, there's a good chance it would, you know, it's it's thinner. Like if I were stoning directly on this t-shirt fabric on the knit, it would definitely be sticking to the board. But because I was stoning on this uh, iron-on stuff, it's it's too thick and it won't stick to the board. But what you would do is after you get all your stones placed on your garment, take your hand and run it underneath just to make sure it's not stuck to the board. And then you can let it sit there to let it dry. And I'd let it dry for about an hour before you take it off the board or 30 minutes. You'll need to let your, your glue dry fully on your stones for probably, um, I'd say at least 24 hours before you wear it and at least 72 hours before you wash it. When you wash this garment, and you can wash them, I have, I, I rhinestone every t-shirt that I own. Uh, my family thinks I'm a little loony, but turn it inside out, wash it like normal, and you can even put it in the dryer, but just do it inside out and it should be fine. If Just keep some extra stones. If you lose a stone, you've got the glue, you've got the stones, just stick them back on. So, Well, my shirt's done. I'm ready to root the tigers on. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below, and you're welcome to visit my page, Rhinestone Queen Costumes on Facebook and there's lots of pictures. I actually just posted pictures recently of this current year's competition costume. So if you wanna see what I did this year and look forward to some more videos. I'm gonna do one um, that shows you how to do some appliques uh, with this kind of a technique and then you rhinestone it after you applique it. So you actually can make your own shirt, say whatever you want in whichever way you wanna do it. So that's coming up next. See you next time.